regarding developmental dysplasia of the hip, it is a spectrum of diseases which consist of subluxation to frank dislocation along with instability. As the name depicts, it is a hip dysplasia. The incidence is five to six per 1000 in the early age, but it reduces to one over 1000, which needs certain type of treatment. The risk factor is family history, female, fetal presentation of breach, oligohydromias. The on clinical assessment, there is a shortening, which is checked by the Galaxy test. There is a medial thigh crease and asymmetrical posterior gluteal crease. On clinical assessment, I will assess the patient by testing and doing these uh, findings and checking for these findings. Moreover, I will check with a Ortolani and or a Barlow test. Ortolani is the is the test in which you relocate the test the the hip. Basically, your thumb is to the medial aspect of the thigh while your index and ring fingers on the lateral aspect at the level of greater trochanter region. You try to flex and adduct, abduct the hip and feel for a clink. If the hip is dislocated and is reducible, we say Ortolani is positive. Barlow test is a provocation test which dislocates the hip. Same with the positioning of the thumb, index and the middle finger with thumb medially and laterally force uh, lateral and and laterally lies the index and the middle finger you try to adduct adduct the hip and feel for a clunk as depicts barlow positive means that the hip is dislocatable ortolani po positive means the hip is dislocated and is reducible ortolani positive needs some sort of treatment while Barlow positive needs observation itself. The structure which can hamper a dislocation, a reduction of the hip center into the acetabulum are either extra ligamentous, extra articular, or intra articular. Extra articular are the muscles, that is iliswas, rectus femoris muscle, and adductors. While the intra articular is pulvinar, pulvinar fibro is a fiber, it is a fibro fatty tissue which is developed inside the estabular cavity, thickened ligamentum teres, iliswas, which makes a hour glass deformity and inverted labrum. We, when, when we do a, a arthrogram, a medial dipole of more than 5 millimeter denotes a dislocation. Clearly, when a child is, bo uh, is, uh, is, is born, we have a night program in United Kingdom, which consists of assessing the patient with history and history and examination findings. If the history examination findings is positive, we do a two-week ultrasound assessment in which we do an ultrasound and check for the graph angle. If the history is positive, while the examination is negative, we see the patient at six weeks time and then assess a graph angle. As the proximal fibrillar apophysis is not developed, that's why we go for uh, assessment with respect to ultrasound. Uh, alpha angle of should be always more than 60 degrees, while the graph uh, beta angle should be less than 55 degrees. Any increase in beta angle denotes that the hip is uh, out of the center and probably dislocating. Similarly, alpha angle, which is becomes smaller, means that the hip is dislocatable. 
it is the graph is basically a static ultrasound but now it has been added to a dynamic ultrasound assessment at a six months interval i would prefer to do x-ray in which i will check for a stable development a stable angle of sharp uh, disrupted shunter line and drawing a Hilgen's renal line, which is a draw the level of triradiate cartilage and a Perkin line on the lateral aspect of the acetabulum, and to check if the femoral head is lying at the medial and superior quadrant. If it is present in the superior and the lateral quadrant, this means the hip is dislocated. We can also do a rimmer index in an older population in which we see how much of the femoral head is outside the lateral Perkins line. If more than 33%, it means it's subluxed. If more than 50%, it states that it is dislocating. Regarding the treatment, I will divide it less than six months, for which I, we have already discussed the pelvic hardness and pelvic hardness disease. Regarding the less than one year of child, I will, less than 18 months of child, I would prefer to do a examination and anesthesia, arthrogram, and a hip spica cast. Regarding the O-production, I would leave the patient had dislocated and prefer to do O-production once the femoral ossific nucleus has developed. Regarding even if we do a pelvic harness or we do a spica cast, a safe zone of Ramsey is important. The concept is that safe zone of Ramsey means the zones at which the hip dislocation is reduced. <clears throat> then there is a zone which is called marginal zone. The amount degree of flexion is about 9 to 100 degrees and safe zone of Ramsey is around 40 to 60 degrees of abduction. More abduction more risk of medial femoral, medial circumflex femoral artery kinking, more flexion, more chance of femoral nerve injury. So whenever we doing hip spica cast, we assess and see what is the safe zone of Ramsey and minus, we minus 20 degrees from that. For example, if I am going to do a, 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 a patient uh, checking the patient in in flexion and abduction. If the hip dislocates at 20 degree of abduction, then I will add 20 degree into the abduction angle and I will put a cast in 40 degree of abduction. Similarly, if adduction causes dislocation, uh, abduction causes dislocation, I will minus 20 degrees of abduction uh, and put a cast, for example, if it dislocates at 70 degrees of abduction, I will minus and put a cast in 50 degree of abduction. Similar is for the flexion. Extreme flexion will cause a dislocation. So I will minus 20 degrees and put a cast in that position. After putting a hip spica cast, I plan to do arthrogram before doing anything. So when I'm doing arthrogram, I plan to prefer to do a medial approach. <clears throat> this helps me to avoid the hourglass deformity, which, which is developed because of iliopsoas tendon and uh, when I'm doing a medial uh, uh, arthrogram I place a high park solution I abduct the hip find the adductor tendon go posterior to the adductor tendon put the needle in take an image x-ray identify that I am inside the 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 uh, the hip joint Put a dye, inject it, take an image, see the findings, then reduce the hip and apply spica cast in that position. In some patients, about 20% patients would need adductor tenotomy 
which I can do percutaneously in this age group. After the hip spica, I plan to keep the patient in three months of spica cast. And in between, I plan to change the spica cast as six weeks interval inside the theater. I would also do a, a CT scan follow up, which helped me identify if the dislocation is, uh, is reduced. Yes, I have applied pelvic harness. Pelvic harness is a dynamic flexion orthotic device. This is used in DDH and proximal femur fracture and femoral shaft fractures in children less than six months of age. Anyhow, the this is a device which is used in patients who are able to kick. That is, there is no neurovascular injury. There is no abdominal injury itself. There are five different sizes of pelvic harness. The pelvic harness consists of a shoulder strap, chest strap, the limb supports with two straps, that is in the anterior flexion strap and the posterior abduction strap. So when pelvic harness is applied, for example, if I'm doing this for a DDH patient, I will apply a shoulder strap and the abdominal strap after the measurement at adequate size, apply the limb straps, lift the patient, do a ortolani test, do a dynamic ultrasound and make sure that the hip is in the um, stapular cavity and then place the straps, that is the anterior strap for flexion and the posterior strap to avoid adduction. More flexion would cause a femoral nerve injury and the child will not be kicking. More abduction would increase the chance of kinking of the medial circumflex femoral artery and increasing avascular necrosis. Moreover, if you apply a pelvic harness in a non-reduced DDH, there is a predilection to go for a harness disease where there is a posterior medial erosion of the acetabular cavity. Anyhow, if my uh, spica cast placement does show in the next follow-up that the hip is still dislocated, I would prefer to avoid a spica cast to avoid uh, increasing risk of avascular necrosis and uh, erosion of the acetabulum and injury to the femoral head itself. I plan to see this patient in 13 months interval, at which stage I plan to do an uh, examination and anesthesia again. Uh, arthrogram and possibly open reduction plus minus internal fixation. <clears throat> My preferred method is Smith Peterson approach. A Smith Peterson approach is an anterior approach to the hip. A bikini shape incision is given. The plane of dissection is between the sartorius and tensor fascia lata. Tensor fascia lata is uh, uh, supplied by superior gluteal nerve, while the sartor is supplied by femoral nerve. Deep down, the dissection is between the rectus femoris and the gluteus medius. The lateral circumflex femoral nerve is at risk, as the vessels from the circumflex femoral arteries are also at risk. When I give an incision, I search for a glistening fat and continue dissection through that plane, reach the rectus femoris, and sometimes I would need to have a tenotomy of the rectus femoris itself to identify the hip capsule. For the incision, I usually give a T-shaped incision to do capsulotomy and then capsulography. I define the pathology, check the stability, and do as needed.
I the the osteotomy, if needed later in in a later stage, would be either a acetabular osteotomy or a femoral osteotomy. Femoral osteotomy is added in a later age when there is a shortening which is required, or either there is an internal rotation component required to reduce the hip. Regarding the pelvic osteotomy, these are the recommended osteotomy in the early age. This can be volume reducing, redirectional, or salvage sort of osteotomies. So, regarding the type of acetabular osteotomies, the most common is salter and nominator osteotomy. Basically, reach the the joint, go proximally, identify the the uh, the level of the ileum, do an osteotomy. Take a tricortical graft and place it, and then place fix it with K wires. It's basically a redirectional osteotomy. Then there is a pembrotum osteotomy. A pem uh, as salter denominator osteotomy moves uh, and needs a uh, and and the, the uh, moves on the symphysis pubis itself. Then we have pembrotal osteotomy. In which the osteotomy angle is slightly uh, going towards the acetabular side, it is not involving and and the graft is 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 placed in such a way that the volume of the acetabulum is reduced. <clears throat> so the pembrotal osteotomy acts on the triradiate cartilage. Once the triradiate cartilage is fused. That is the age of six and older. We do a triple innominate osteotomy. A triple innominate osteotomy, you do osteotomy of the superior inferior pubic rami as well as proximal to the acetabulum, and then redirect it. Once the triradiate cartilage has fused, then we can do a PAO, periacetabular osteotomy, which basically is an incomplete osteotomy. So the posterior. Uh, Cortex acts as a hinge, and a graft is placed. In this osteotomy, it's a quite a stable osteotomy and doesn't need a graft itself. Then we have osteotomies which are salvage osteotomies. They can be carry or a shelf osteotomy. A carry osteotomy is basically uh, where the acetabulum is move, moved medially, and then the the displacement acts as a stable configuration to avoid dislocation. A shelf osteotomy, as the name depicts, you put a, a graft just superior to the acetabulum to avoid dislocation and the and the plastic deformity and hypermetaplasia of the graft itself acts as a stability. The Salvage osteotomies are the osteotomies which are non-anatomical. These are osteotomies which we use biological plasticity and metaplasia of the head, uh, of the bone, to improve the stability, like chari and a shelf. Chari is a non-anatomical osteotomy where there is an iliac osteotomy and their displacement of the acetabulum is done medially. Shelf is when the cortical bone is placed anterior lateral aspect of the acetabulum, which just covers the head. And this dysplasia makes a larger surface area for the head. The age is in books is zero to six years or zero to eight years. Remember that the other osteotomies like triple on nominate osteotomy or a Gans osteotomy are still anatomical osteotomies, which can be done even at the adult age. So if I have a chance to go on for doing a PAO or a triple nominate, I will proceed with it. But otherwise, if the acetabulum is too shallow to do these osteotomies itself, I would prefer proceed to do a salvage osteotomy. Also remember that if the patient has bilateral deformity, I would not go for salvage osteotomy. These are indicated only in a unilateral deformity where you have to correct it. Try to think about think about the fact that if you do a chari osteotomy on one side and the chari osteotomy on the other side, it will have more risk in a female while childbearing. <clears throat>
and there are multiple more complications with the compromise of the pelvic uh, volume. Regarding the femoral osteotomy, they can be either shortening or a rotational osteotomies. Uh, rotational osteotomies are, 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 are uh, now less in fashion. Instead, a shortening osteotomy is depicted if the reduction is difficult to maintain. These osteotomies are added later on in the stage uh, when the deformity and antiversion is severe enough and the reduction is difficult.